Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to look at input remapping. Now if you are wondering what does it mean, then allow me to explain. Input remapping simply means that the developer provides the players or users the ability to customize the game controls from within the game. For this I will be using Godot 4.1. And now without further ado, let's get into it right after the intro. Okay, for this tutorial, I have this nice environment set up and I also have this ball which is a rigid body 3D and also have the ball script to control it. Now I won't dive into it a lot but basically I'm reading the inputs and then applying the torque. Speaking of inputs, I'll also set up an input map to go up, down, left and right. In case you don't know how to set it up, you just simply type in the action, hit the add button, then you define the input key. For the tutorial, it doesn't matter if we set up the keys, but I have defined the WASD keys nonetheless. I've also set up the nice UI which will pop up when we hit the settings button. Now first we want to create a custom resource that will hold our default input map. For that let's create a script. I will call it game inputs which will extend from resource. I like to define the class name for all my scripts but for the custom resource I think you must define the class name. Now if you are wondering what is custom resource, then think of it as a data container. It is also equivalent of Unity's scriptable objects. Anyway in our script, let's define the enum. I will call it actions and we will define all our input actions here. Make sure you type in exactly what you have defined in input map. Also, we can specify them in snake case, but in most languages, enums are all caps, so we will follow that naming convention. Then let's define input events for all the actions, basically input keys. We will also throw in the export keyword so we can define them from the inspector. Okay, that's it for our game input script. In our project, now we can create custom resource. Right click, create new resource. Then select game inputs that we have just created. Let's give a name for our resource. I will also call it game inputs. In the inspector, we have four input events. Let's define them. For up, let's give new input key event. It will have lots of properties, but we don't have to worry about them. We just click on this configure button, define the key. I will set W and hit OK. Let's do the same for the rest. Now we want to access this resource, so let's create another script. I will call it input map controller which extends from node class. In our scene, let's create a node. I will also call it input map controller. Attach the script to it. In our script, we want to access our game inputs, so let's define a field for that. I will also throw in the static keyword. I will explain it in a minute. Okay, we have the field. But to get the reference of our game inputs, let's first define two more fields which will hold the paths. And instead of defining variables, I will make them constants because the paths will not change. Okay, so default path is the path where our game inputs are currently located and the second path is the path where we will store game inputs for our users. You can set it however you like, but the user colon double slash is necessary. 
this user means persistent user data. If you want to know more, I will link it in the description. Okay, in ready method, let's load our game inputs using resource loader dot load method. Now we are loading the game inputs from the user data path, but first time it won't exist, right? So let's throw an if statement to check if we have the reference or not. And the first time the condition will be true because there is nothing here currently. So if our game input is null, load them from default path. Now let's create another script called remap button which extends from button. In our script, let's first define what action this button represents. I will call it action and its type will be the enum we have defined in game inputs. And let me also throw in the default value. I will also throw in export to access it from the inspector. We will assign it to our four action buttons. Set the action. Also make sure that you have set the toggle mode to true for all the buttons. Now let's override unhandled key input method. This method will be called whenever we hit any key on our keyboard. Let me just show you real quick. I will just set the key as text for our button just for the demo. Now every time I hit any key, it will update our button text. It is updating for all the buttons, which is not the desired output. We only want to call this when we toggle any of the button. So first things first in ready function, let's call set process unhandled key input and pass false. This will tell Godot that don't call this method at all. Now let's connect the method on our button's toggle signal. I will do that from the code itself because I don't want to go to inspector and click connect for all buttons. So here we are saying when we toggle our button, call on button toggled method. And on button toggle does not exist, so let's create it. Here let's tell Godot to call unhandled key input if our button's toggle state is true. Then let's check if toggle state is true. If so, set the text to dot dot dot. Basically waiting for an input. And in unhandled key input method, we will set the key. Set key does not exist, so let's create it. Here we will set the key for our action. So let's throw in switch case. I mean match statement. So match action. If our button is for up action. We will set the pressed key for that action in our game input. But the question is how we will access them. Remember I have thrown static keyword in our input map controller. So because our game inputs are static, we can access them here by simply doing input map controller dot game inputs. And we want to set the key for up action. So dot action up event equal event. We will do the same for remaining actions. Now after setting the key, we want to set our button's toggle state to false. And in our on button toggled method, we are setting our button's text to dot dot dot. When toggle state is true, we need to display the pressed key when the toggle state is false. So else display key and display key does not exist. So let's create it. Here we will also check what action our button represents and read the key stored for that action from our game inputs. 
So again, match action. If our button represents up action, set its text to game inputs action up event. Do the same for all remaining actions. We will also call display key in ready function. To display the proper key user have stored, otherwise it will just display the default text we have set while creating the UI. Ok now if we hit play, we can change the keys for our actions, but only the button's text is updating, it is not actually updating the input map. As you can see here, I'm pressing up, but our ball is not going up. And the reason is pretty straightforward. We are only updating our custom resource. We haven't actually touched the input map. But hey, that's why we have created the input map controller. So in input map controller, let's create a method that will apply the new keys from our game inputs to the input map. I will call it apply input map. Also throw in the static keyword. So I can also call it from the remap button script. Here first let's erase every key for our action. Input map dot action erase events. And then it is asking for what action you want to remove all keys. Let's say for up action, we will define a string variable. And we cannot simply convert our enum value to string. Enums basically have a tendency to be extra tricky for no apparent reason in all languages I'm familiar with. So we will get all keys of our actions enum. Then we will pass the value as index. This will convert it to string but we have defined the inputs in snake case. This will give us all caps. So let's convert the string into the lower case. Then we will pass it to action erase events. Then let's add the new key for the up action using input map dot action add event. We want to add key for up action and the key will be the one stored in the game inputs for up action. Let's do the same for all actions. And we will also call the apply input map method in ready method because we want to apply the new keys instead of the default ones when we start the game. We also need to save our game inputs so let's create a method for that. I have also made it static for the same reason so I can call it from the remap button. Here we will do resource saver dot save we want to save game inputs on our persistent user path in our remap button let's apply the new input map when we change the key so in on button toggle method after display key call input map controller dot apply input map then also save the input map with input map controller dot save input map this will update and save our input map every time we change any action key. Generally, you want to give user an apply settings button and call these two when apply button is pressed. So keep that in mind. I will leave that to you. And now we can change the input map. And it works. If I restart the game. Yep, pretty cool. And that's pretty much the video. If you find the video helpful, consider like, share and subscribe. Wishlist Cosmic Roads on Steam. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. That's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one.